Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, in my last video, I talked about using the Canon 5D Mark IV and the Sigma 150 to 600 lens. When I started doing that, it opened up different questions that I had and that people have asked me over the years and stuff. And I thought I would address some of them in different videos and try some different things because it is springtime here in Southern Alberta. It's not a really busy time, so it's a good time to try different things. And I thought I would try using the raw files and seeing if I got better pictures taking the raw files than the JPEG files. So a little side note before we get started. I know that you can shoot raw and JPEGs in other cameras. The reason that I thought of it when I started doing the 5D Mark IV, not only were people asking about it, but because I have the dual card slots in the 5D Mark IV, I just thought, eh, may as well try it. So I did it. Now, I always tell people, always, and when I'm mentoring them, when I'm coaching them, when I'm teaching them, when I'm doing anything, I always tell them, question what you're doing to see if there's a better way of doing it. Don't change just so you can say you changed, but change if you need to. Years ago, I had the opportunity to take a seminar with Zig Ziglar. And he told a story about this daughter who was making dinner and she asked her husband if he would cut the ham in half. Somebody that heard her say that asked the husband, why do you cut the ham in half? He says, because my wife asked me to. And so they went to the wife and says, why do you cut your ham in half? And she said, because my mother always cut the ham in half. So the daughter decided to phone her mother and asked her mother, why did you cut your ham in half? And the mother said, because my mother said to cut the ham in half and always did it. So then the mother decided to phone her mother, the first girl's grandmother, and ask her, mom, why did you always cut your hams in half? What did it achieve? And the grandmother said, I only had a small roaster. So in order to get it to fit in the roaster, I had to cut my ham in half. Well, guess what? The mother and the granddaughter had bigger roasters. They didn't need to cut their hams in half. And that's how we are in so many things. We get so set in something. And I admit it, I'll put up my hand. I'm one of those people. If I've been doing something the same way for years, I will continue to do it. So I thought this was a good opportunity that I would go in and try the raw files from my camera and compare them to the JPEG files. So I've been doing it for a little bit now, shot a few thousand images by doing it. And I've put them on the computer, I've edited, I've done, I've checked. I've done. And so this is my initial results. Now, this is only after doing it for a month and a half, two months, whatever it's been. I'm just trying to think what day it is. It's middle of April. So yeah, it's been about a month. There's just over a month that I've been doing it. So what are my initial results? Well, my initial results are what I expected in that my JPEGs are fine and that the RAWs are fine. There is no huge difference between the JPEGs and the RAWs for quality. Now, that being said, on some of the pictures that I've shot, have I been able to salvage images by going into the RAW files and using them that I wouldn't have been able to fix just with the JPEG files? Yes, 100% yes. But, and here's a big but, you don't necessarily have to do that if you shoot enough pictures. So, perfect example. I was down shooting some pelicans the other day at the river bottom. Had the Canon 5D Mark IV. I knew it was shooting raw and JPEGs. I'm shooting away. Came back, put my pictures on the computer, and I looked at them. One of the pictures when I was shooting, either a gust of wind hit or I shook a little bit. Something happened, but it was a little bit shaky. Now, the JPEG image, after I ran it through Unsharpen, after I tried to run it through Smart Sharpen and all this other stuff, was not retrievable. It just wasn't. I took the raw file. I ran the raw file through a processor where it sharpened it, and it looked a little bit 
better. Not a lot, but it was better than what the JPEG was. But here's the thing. I just deleted it and used the picture on either side because I didn't shoot just one image. Now, if you have problem with exposures, if you have problem with uh, focus, if you have a problem with anything that you're finding your files are not correct, raw may be that extra step that you need to do or that extra effort that you need to put into it to make your images from bad to good or good to great. It may help you. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying you may not have to. As far as all the images that I've shot, I have not seen a difference between the RAW and the JPEG in my success rate. I have not seen a difference in the RAW and JPEG between the quality rate. I have 100% noticed that the images look different because one image, the JPEG, is processed in camera and the other image, the RAW, I bring back and I process on my computer. So there is a difference in how they look. I've got them close, never got them to match. But have I got to the point that I've noticed that there's a big difference and that one is superior to the other? No, they're just different. Now, that's been my initial response. I'm going to keep trying it. I'm actually going to switch over some of my 70Ds to shoot RAW and JPEG as well. So when I shoot other stuff, I'm just going to keep playing because it's good to try different things and it's good to expand your knowledge and just understand things. So I'm going to keep doing it. But, and here's a big but, no matter what you do, whether you shoot JPEGs only or you shoot RAWs only, do not make the conversion over to the other one without learning the benefits and the drawbacks. If you have to, shoot RAW and JPEGs for a while. Go for it. If you shoot JPEGs now, start shooting some RAW and start doing processing. See if it makes your pictures any better. If it does, great. If you shoot RAWs now, don't switch over to doing JPEGs when you have a wedding tomorrow and then all of a sudden realize, uh-oh, all my pictures are out of focus. You don't want to do that. But you may want to try shooting RAW and JPEGs and see what your success is going to be. What do I think I'm going to find over the long term? Well, pretty much what I've known over the years, I think, is what I'm going to come up with. That the, some pictures, if shot just in RAW, are more editable than the pictures that are shot in JPEG. I know I'm going to find that. I know that I'm going to find that some pictures shot in RAW will be able to be saved where the JPEGs wouldn't have been. I know I'm going to find that. I also think that there's going to be some times if I screw up that the, that the RAW files are going to be easier to repair than the JPEGs. And in that I'm thinking of if I happen to hit the wrong white balance setting, or if I happen to not get the focus 100%. I know that the RAWs are going to allow me to fix that. But at the same time, for somebody like me who came from shooting film and slides, where you didn't have the ability to apply on sharp mask, where you didn't have the ability to apply Gaussian blur or to remove blur or to do whatever, where you didn't have the ability to increase saturation or change levels or anything like that, for me, raw is just a step that I do not see that I'm going to need. But time will tell. I'm going to, like I said, continue it. I'm going to continue to report back to you and tell you what I've found. And then we'll go from there. So until next time, get out there, take some pictures, expand your knowledge base and try different things and enjoy this wonderful hobby or business of photography. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.